Hello once again and welcome to the Banner Saga. This is a game that's been released yesterday and it's a strategy game with RPG elements. It looks pretty interesting. It's a, a Viking type game. I don't think there's any kind of fantasy elements to it. I mean, I don't, I don't know if he's a demon or whether he's, he's a Viking. Let's just assume that he's a Viking, right? So, um, the thing is, it's a strategy game, but there's also dialogue options, much like in Mass Effect. And the reason it's much like Mass Effect is because it's made by Bioware, or at least ex-Bioware devs. So it's, it's Bioware without the limitations of EA, basically. And it looks like it's gonna be pretty good. You can pick it up for 18 quid on Steam. And apparently it's got really good reviews as well. It's got nine, it's got like nine out of ten from most places. So let's begin. I haven't seen any gameplay of this whatsoever. I've just seen like the odd review, the odd screenshot of like cinematics and stuff. And it looks a bit like Disney. But don't let that fool you. Because a lot of weird shit happens. Like repercussions are a big part. As it says here, the story in Barna Saga changes based on the choices you make. You will occasionally switch between lead characters and witnessing the story unfold from a different perspective. The gods are dead. Well, that's a great start. In their wake, man and giant survived. Alright, so maybe it is kind of fancy. Through a tenuous alliance, driving black destroyers called Dredge deep into the northern wastes. Now is an era of growth and trade. Life goes on. Only one thing has stopped. The sun. Dun dun dun. It does look really fucking awesome. Like, the art style looks really nice. And it's rather unique, because not a lot of games would go for this sort of, like, Disney art style. I know that they weren't going for the Disney art style, but it looks like that. It looks like an animation film. been several long months on the road. The first signs of snowfall accost us on our approach to Strand, largest of the trade cities on the Val human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. Some of the men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to superstition, but I myself will be glad to be done with this year's rounds. We have been warned by stranded travelers about brigands on the path through Ritzhorn, our road home. Our captain seems unconcerned. Perhaps he is as eager as I to be done here. We will rest here this day and inquire further when we speak to the governor. There's no option for subtitles, which is why I'm kind of like silent when it's cinematics. Otherwise, I would talk over it a little bit, but with no subtitles, you can't really say much. Oh shit, I didn't know they were giants. Humans. So the giant, the enemies. I do not know. I totally agree with what he just said. I don't know what the fuck he's on about. Uh, you arrived just in time. The chieftain in red and his men are now looking at a tougher fight than they bargained for. Click and drag around the screen to see your surroundings. Check the mark to continue. Also, it's got like this kind of Rayman Origins. Rayman Origins, is that what it's called? It's got that Rayman kind of feel to it where it's like 2.5D almost. Like it's got that in front of there. It's got like a bar here, which is pretty nice actually. I like that. These portraits show the order of initiative. Taking turns from left to right, your allies are blue, the enemy is red. Nice. Movement happens before action. This ring shows your shield banger 
is active. Blue tiles around them show where he can move. So it's all like chess, in a way. Some characters fill more tiles than others. He fills four. Um, while humans fill a single one. Blue tile that you want to move to. There we are. Hello. You can choose either attack the enemy's strength or break his armor. So is that his armor? He's got four armor, five health. We'll go for, it seems logical to go for shield first because that's like his main defense. Then go for health, yeah? How come we not? So we have to press two. Now we have to go past. The strength uh, counts as both health and damage. A loss of two strength means you'll now do two less damage. Alright, so that'll kill him. Alright. Each time you get a kill, your renown grows, which is used later to improve your characters. So that's like your level up type deal. So let's move him over there. Alright, so now he moves. Now it's your Warhawk's turn. Let's go here. Standard attacks only affect single enemy, but with your Warhawk, he has a special ability that gives him a unique advantage. So is that it? Tempest? Yeah, it would be Tempest, wouldn't it? So then we have to click on him. Um, when there's only one enemy left, players enter pillage mode. During pillage, each character moves in order and there are no more guaranteed turns. Willpower can you boost your attack. I click his. Click the fist, and then the star above the fist. The number of stars available each turn is determined by your exertion stat. You'll see the damage number go up as you add willpower. Now he's dead. Nice. So that was like the tutorial, basically. Sweet. Like a rabid wolf, that one. How did it come to this? We fool ourselves believing that peace will last. My grandfather built all this from a poor fishing village, you know. He watched the gods die, watched the chaos that followed, watched man and bar slaughter each other, even before the dreads arose. All we've done is traded one struggle for another. Now that there are no more dreads to war against, we war against ourselves. This chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families in the city would gladly take my chair. This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade quite well, I would add, though he denied it to his lust. This sort of wolf doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. I am in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight, and I'll gladly send you on your way with double our king's tithe. Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. Chapter 1. Only the sun has stopped. So it looks like we play as the Giants. I mean, it, it does vary, as I said before, but I think we're playing as the Giants right now. Helping humans. You're approached by a familiar man who walks in step with you as you're leaving the Great Hall. 
he cuts to the chase. Do we press X? Alright. Alright, so this is Eric. Eric, steward of Strand, I manage the governor's business. Ubin, is it? And then we have to choose what our answer is. I'm just here for the thief. The teeth? What? What do you want? Well, be polite, because we don't know him. He might be nice. It is. The governor tells me you'll be giving us a hand. I don't exactly agree. What do you have in mind? It seems a bit out around here, Eric. What do you have in mind? Skull things? What? Skull things that you don't have up the Great Hall? Scattered after you took out the chieftain. What the hell is scaffings? The governor just wants to make sure that they stay down. I was hoping you'd join me in the marketplace by the docks. If there's anyone left to worry about, I know who can tell us. Alright, well it seems like we're helping him. It's the best icon ever. Um, so is that where we need to go? Let me handle this. You meander through rows of open-faced houses and eroded stores. Coloured canvases flap on greeny current. One man in particular blanches you as you approach. Hard. I'm not in the mood today. For what? Talking to an idiot. The Scalfans cleaved in bed out about an hour ago, Had. So when you tell me what rat anus the rest of them crawled back into, nobody's going to try and kill you. The words used in this are so fucking weird. Rat anus. Like, who uses that? Who uses that word? I don't talk to... They don't talk to me. So we can choose to say, like, Eric needs some help here. I don't have the patience for this. Say nothing. I'll say I need some help, because that might, like, inadvertently intimidate him. Had a change of, I've had a change of heart. I hope you don't give us a hard time. Had sweats visibly, fumbling with some dirty trinkets on his table. See, like, I did not turn him. Wait, just buy one of these. If everyone thinks I'm getting worked up every week, how am I supposed to know much? Just a little food money, yeah? So you can intimidate him, you can pay him, you can do nothing. I think we should intimidate him. I'm not paying him any money. You motion at Gundolf, your enormous bodyguard, who looms over the man like a snake over a mouse. Gods, Eric, lay not on a bit heavy, don't you think? Where's the scarf hands? Nobleman up by the east wall. But that was months ago. The last I know. Had strolls away with a wave of Eric's hand, gathering things from his hovel, disappearing for a while until this blows over. You figure. Your bodyguard steps forward. We done here. So this is uh, wait, are we Ibn? Dunno if were you wearing a green Were you wearing green back at the hall? No, oh, just bought them while you were walking around. Why? You look like a frog. No reason they look good. I'll say, we'll say that would be nice to him. There's no reason not to be nice to him, you know? I'm glad you care. Gunnar goes after looking more stubbles. Who is he to us? Is he just a friend or is he like a family member? Because he looks pretty similar. Eric, that man who all seemed unreliable at best. A blind dog wouldn't trust Had, but he had. But he used to be scalping. How did he used to be. He used to be scalping the person or the people. I don't know. I don't know what the scalping are. If they're licking their wounds, they've probably gone to old haunts. Not new ones. Alright, so it's a race or a group. Noble man is a meat hall. Best I can tell. The name's ironic. Listen, I know a guy who would love to put a few of these scrolls into the ground. I'm going to find him. I'll meet you there. Shouldn't we have an approach of some sort? Where's this place again? Shouldn't we have an approach? What a luxury. Come on, you've already mopped up worse today. 
Just make sure the governor remembers his promise, double the usual thief. So thief's a currency. I think we'll get more kind of like free roaming options later on. Maybe. But like so far you can only go to the meat house. And then we can go to the before we can only go to there. So it'll be nice to see what kind of differences where you go to makes. Because I'm sure you can go to wherever you want later day. You arrive in front of what must be a nobleman. A few minutes later, Eric appears with a weather-beaten man introduced as Valgard. I'll point them out, Eric says over his shoulder. Ready? Let's get it over with you walking through the front door. Yeah, why would you walk through the front door? They ran into a meat house, says Valgrad. I'd be surprised if they can stand up straight right now. Okay, here we go. I like the idea that that's how a Viking sounds. Uh, Valgard boosts the front door open so hard it won't close again without repair. As you enter the hall, Eric is already at the head of the table, his axe drawn, wide-eyed drunken. Scalfing the scramble to find their own weapons, turning tables and meat steams in the process. And I, I assume this is now a fight. Yes. Yeah, so it'll be good to play this without the restrictions of the tutorial. Alright, so we're playing as this guy. Oh, I'm gonna click ready, don't we? Ready! So, what is our willpower? Willpower is 8. So, we're gonna have to move forward. And what I think we should do, because this does take some thinking, like, um, what we should do is we should get the two humans at front. And then move like, so like we have him, like in front of him, him, in front of him, right? But then they can't attack further than, like, they can't attack past the humans. Alright, what I'll do is, move this guy here, and yeah, move over there. And that did cost us some willpower as well. Stone wall. That will do stone wall. What does that do? Is that just like a defense mechanism? And now we're playing as this other human. Yeah, I think that's worth it. We'll see, we'll see. I'm not too familiar with the mechanics just yet. Right, what does Rally do? I think we should attack. So that guy has 8 health. So we can attack him for three, or we can take down his shields and then later on do more damage. So what we should probably do is have the humans bring down the shields of these guys and then have the giants finish them off. Because he does, if I get them, if, if I've got this correct, he does seven damage, he does eleven. And how does he do? How do, how do I do three? Fuck knows. Alright, let's just shield. So now we'll do more damage in the future. Move this guy over here. Yeah, tick. Shit, he's surrounded. Where can this guy go? This guy should probably go here and kind of like flank them in a way. Good deal. Right, where can these tempests? So he's not in my radius yet. Attack? I want to attack him. I don't think we can eat a lot of this. So what I should probably do is just end him. That guy's surrounded. 
We'll try and give him a little bit of support with the humans. Shit. Alright, this is not working out. Alright, so who are we playing as now? Eric. That seems like a good thing, because we do 4 attack, he has 3 health, so it's not like we're losing too much. Like, if we attack someone with 3 health and we had 7 attack, it would be pretty stupid, you know? But it's just like 1, so that will knock him out. We don't use the stars, because there's no need. We've got a new Renowned. And I'm not sure how the battles work. If you lose, does that affect the narrative? As in, like, if you lose, like, the story continues? I'm not too sure. I only know that dialogue choices made a difference. I'm not sure if like failing will make a difference. Now if only this guy had Tempest, we could use it on all those. We're not gonna use it on that two guy, because like the human can use his two attack. Eight. Not on eight. Go over here. And by attacking him, we'll attack him too, won't we? Yeah, we killed them both. And he got promoted as well, which is pretty good. And then that guy's fell right into the trap of going back into the Tempest area. We'll stay here. We'll attack. See what I mean? So how much health that I have too? Might as well use the four, you know. Might as well just do that. And then next turn we'll take out the two with him. So now we have Eric again. We're going to have to put ourselves in that kind of situation where we're stuck between two people. What does Rally do? We'll rally him. Probably shouldn't have moved, but I didn't know what rally was at that time. You know? This is two, this is five. I only do one attack. I do four to him, though. That's rather strange. Kill him anyway, get rid of him. I don't know why we only did one attack to him. Take him down. Yeah, why not? He's dead. This is his health out, actually. So, if we take his shield down, we'll do more damage. So we should take a shield down so that when he attacks, it'll do more damage. I think that's why we did such little attack to him, because his shield's pretty high. So who we're playing as this guy. We can only attack him. Attack him, and use both willpowers, in the hopes that that takes him down. Oh, I've got him to one, which is alright. It's better than nothing. Then with this. Six. Yeah, we should probably do this. So he's down three. Fuck him. E five. Nice. Now with this guy again. Don't need to use willpower because we're just gonna take him down anyway, you know. Does 
really made a difference, but we should probably kill this guy. Because I'm not sure if he has the range. Pillage. How the hell do we punch? Does that just mean there's the last guy? That didn't really mean anything else, apart from it's the last guy, I think. The foe is lying dead at your feet, which regret anything. Promotion, tempered by blood. I can't read it. Oh, it's ready for promotion. It's just the same thing. Nice. There they are. Gods be damned. I've got to wash off this blood. Eric is looking out his hall windows onto the bay. A fleet of long ships approached with sails of bold reds and blues. Who are they? One banner I know well. Vognir. Next for Val, kingship. Last we spoke. The other flag. Looks important. I know I'm switching around the voices, but I just can't pop it. Yep, important guests. See what I have. What? See what I have to deal with all day. Oh, things made little more sense. I hope that I'd have to stay again. So everything's fine here when the royal guests arrive. Not me, the governor. Now I have to make sure that there are no rotting bodies or pools of entrails sitting in the great hall before they come by. Can I ask one more favour? No, nope, Eric, I've done enough. We'll ask what it is before we kind of turn it down. You know what I mean? Like, we'll get context about the issue. At least. If you happen to stall the guests down on the docks, I wouldn't object. Maybe I will. Eric and the Valgard hustle from the meat house. To his credit, Eric tosses the barkeep a spar of silver for the mess. He gives an apologetic shrug and go to greet the new arrivals down at the docks. Nice. And then that's the next place to do it. I can see myself really enjoying this game. Um, it's a bit hard to get into, but I think that's the same with most games. Uh, but yeah, I'll continue playing it, try and finish it. And I think it's a game that I could enjoy if I got myself in the way, got in the mindset of playing it, but so far it is pretty damn fun. I just need to get more engrossed in the plot and stuff for it to really be enjoyable for me at least. But yeah, see you next time. And as you can also see, the fleets have actually appeared there who weren't there before, which is a, a, a nice little kind of feature where like stuff changes to the plot.